My name is Rachel Seymour, and I am your Biloxi Chamber of Commerce Director. At this time, I'd like to welcome some of our VIPs in the, uh, in the room today. Of course, we have Mayor Gillich. We'll hear from him shortly. Biloxi Chamber of Commerce takes great pride in honoring the police and firefighters that exhibit outstanding behavior throughout the year. Today, we will recognize the police and firefighters of the third quarter. I want to thank our sponsors, Edgewater Mall and Beau Rivage Resort and Casino, for making this possible. I'm going to ask our Biloxi Chamber Chair, Kristen Duhay, to come forward for the presentation. We'd like to recognize officer of the third quarter, Officer Andrew Callender. I know he couldn't be here today because he's ill. We're going to ask maybe the chief or somebody from leadership or to come forward to accept on his behalf. Officers were dispatched to a residence on Magnolia Street in reference to a home invasion and sexual assault report. Upon revival, officer <clears throat> upon arrival, excuse me, Officer Callender quickly obtained suspect information and advised dispatch to disseminate it to other patrol officers. Callender began patrolling the adjoining neighborhoods and looking for the suspect based on the information given by the victim. Callender recognized the suspect information matched the description on a previous bolo. Be on the lookout, I learned that today. Um, and matched a known suspect. Officer Callender and Sergeant Elliott coordinated a plan to effect an arrest. Shortly thereafter, the suspect was located near a casino. After a brief foot and vehicle pursuit, the suspect was cornered, cutting off his escape, and was arrested. Officer Callender used his instincts, attention to detail, and coordination to make this arrest. Congratulations to Officer Andrew Callender, Officer of the Third Quarter. <laughs> Continuing, congratulations to Battalion Chief Anthony Trosclair, Captain Clay Courtney, Firefighter 3 Ryan Bird, and Firefighter 3 Mark Dronette Jr., Firefighters of the Third Quarter. The crew of Station 2 Marine 1 were dispatched to a call for a victim in the water close to the Biloxi Bay Bridge. Due to the current, the victim's distress, and his close proximity beneath the bridge, it took great skill and teamwork to locate and maneuver the fireboat Marine 1 safely to the patient. Once close enough, firefighter Mark Darnett jumped into the water to retrieve the unresponsive victim, pulling him on board Marine 1. On board Marine 1, the crew placed the patient who, didn't have a, who did have a pulse in recovery position for transport back to the shore. The firefighters then assisted AMR with the patient's transfer to an area hospital with the expectation of full recovery. The crew's quick thinking, professionalism, and skill aided in swift overall mitigation of the incident. The performance of the crew reflects the highest ideals of the Biloxi Fire Department. For their reigning skills, commitment to life safety, and it's great pleasure that we award them Biloxi Chambers Firefighters of the Third Quarter. All right, Mayor, I really don't have much to say about you because we've just been hanging out with you all year at breakfast. So this is it. This is the last one, and you can hang out with your family the rest of the year, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Come on up. Yes, I'm ready for you. I'm to bring me some props. So thank you, Chris. Oh, I'm going to sit down Merritt, it's been great. And, uh, of course, Team Biloxi, when you say free food, they turn out. So uh, yeah, Colonel Manduti and your, your, your wife and then the whole crew from Keesler, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, once my able assistant sets up the, <laughs> sets up the thing. But uh, I've got a couple of notes, but I have to wing it a little bit. But, you know, listen, we just had some elections. I want to congratulate everyone who ran, successful or not successful. It's uh, like taping up and getting in the ring for three minutes. Uh, it, it takes courage and it takes, you know, win, lose, or draw. It, uh, I want to, that's what we're all about. You know, go take your shot for your, for your, people you represent. So I, I congratulate all of them. And, and uh, you know, we, we want everybody to, to kind of represent what we feel is, is best for our, our citizens and, our, and, and, of course, the state and, and the country. But, uh, you know, the big thing that I've always preached is, you know, Biloxi and our coast wants their fair share, and I think we have an opportunity to, to push that. And, you know, as, as people go to Jackson, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, that they represent us and not vice versa. So that, that's one thing I want to do. But speaking of uh, uh, Tate Reeves, I want to congratulate him and Jim, Jim Hood, too, for the, for the race that they ran. But yesterday, uh, and I've never been around a vice president or anything. The other day, Monday, he was, he was in town. Boy, and they had dogs and they had Secret Service. And so I'm supposed to int uh, introduce Tate Reeves, right? That's what the program told me to do. So Shorty Sneed had me, Billy Hughes, and Dane Maxwell. Maxwell does goes first, and then Billy, and then I'm supposed to go. Well, I'm supposed to say, 
Yeah, welcome to Avery, right? Well, that, that's what I thought. So, you know, we're running ahead of schedule and Secret Service, so you got to get over here. We get over there and go up on the stage and, and I start making this pitch. Vincent made me a, a little pitch. It's great to be, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, it, and I'm, I'm building the crowd up. So, look, they see the local color and diversity of this landmass between Waveland and, and Moss Point. We are unique, and some of us are more unique than the others. Well, let me stop and say this. They told me, said, wear socks and take 90 seconds, no more. So, <laughs> so I'm getting hyperspeed now, right? So here I am, and at the end of the day, we are Biloxi. We are Gulfport. We are Bay St. Louis, Waveland, Pass Crochet, and Long Beach, Diablo, Ocean Springs, Goche, Moss Point, Pascagoula, and also Wiggins and all points between. Of course, the crowd, pumped up. Okay. At the end of the day, we're on the coast. We're on one coast. An economic powerhouse that pours hundreds of millions of dollars into the state of economy every, the economy every year. We are vital to the state of Mississippi. I'm here today to welcome someone who knows our Gulf Coast, someone who has stood up for the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and someone, as our governor, will continue to stand up and fight for our Gulf Coast. And ladies and gentlemen, someone who has the attention and support of the White House. So they really, you know, pumping up. My voice is going up. And... Uh, so here it is. Here's the moment, right? Please welcome our true friend, what, uh, our coach's true friend, and tomorrow, after tomorrow's election, the one who will lead us into the future, if, if for the state and this great state of Mississippi into the future. And I said, welcome Tate Reese. And 10 minutes later, he shows up. <laughs> <laughs> true. So he can, <laughs> He is Johnny, right? <laughs> So me and Shorty said to take, tell a few jokes about Havana and some of the things that we did. I said, if they had a piano, me and Billy, we could, we could perform. But anyway, it was great to, to see that, you know, uh, that sort of thing in action. But, uh, you know, things turn out like they're supposed to turn out. And uh, we are, uh, we're, we're proud to, to move forward into the, you know, uh, next number of years. Um, so, again, we're here, and I'm going to try and go through this fast and, and kind of talk about this, but I want to uh, save time for uh, questions. So that's always great to be in front of you, so there are always some creative questions. Right, Rachel? Yeah, always. All right. Well, I think uh, <laughs> we started, you know, infrastructure. In 2015, 54 months ago when I took office, I think there was 55 miles of streets torn up of the 344 million. Vincent, now there's less than 10,000 square uh, linear feet of, of streets that are without paving now. It's, it's a 5,280, less than two. Walt, Walt's back here. You know, he'll, he'll confirm. Uh, when I say yes, just say uh, north of the tracks. It's called the North contract. $129 million. We've got about $19 million of that left to go. The, uh, uh, we started uh, you know, the South contract in three phases. The uh, first the part of that uh, is what I call the Holy Land, but it's actually from, from about White Avenue, Caldwell, all the way to uh, uh, almost uh, Rodenburg, I believe. And that's one, uh, the North contract was, was awarded to Oscar Renda Corporation, and uh, the South is Hemp Hill, and they're in the middle of that. They're, uh, it's about 20, well, $27 million, and uh, they should be complete by March uh, of uh, 2020. Now, what was different is that we broke this Instead of awarding uh, all at one time and having a little bit more control on how this thing will roll out, these the, the South contract is you won't go to another area until you're 70 percent 70 complete of, of the area you do. You know uh, you don't you don't tear up everything, and they have not milled grossly milled all these streets, so we're comfortable with that and the and the, uh, uh, the progress that's being uh, that's being made there. Uh, again. It's a complex project, and uh, you got three systems that you're worried about. Of course, the thing that makes the most sense is this gravity-fed sewer system. You know, again, 1957, uh, the sewer system was put in place in the city of Biloxi, what was then the city of Biloxi. It was only supposed to last 25 years. This is the old pipes and old things that are collapsing now every day. Well, this system uh, takes, uh, uh, you know, and goes from high to low, deep, and then uh, gets everything pumped, uh, force main through to, to both uh, uh, places. Actually, at Seal Avenue and, and uh, uh, the Keegan's Bayou processing plant. But um, that's deep. 34 foot deep in Biloxi is unbelievable. Like a, you see a, a reverse of a pyramid. It starts big, winds way down. So that's, that's an amazing thing that, that's being done. And uh, of course, the group, uh, 
at the Savonia Lodge, they're getting ready to experience that on Maple Street because that's where everything is going. Uh, and, and you can see these big pipes, 42 inch, I believe. Walt, is that right? 42? Anyway, but basically, that gravity is going to eliminate those 75 lift stations, which is, you know, puts us in a real good situation if we have another storm. Because if, if those lift stations don't lift, you got, you got real problems. But so if you can look at this map, and I invite all of you to come in, you know, at the end of the story, um, we're going to have that gravity fed system uh, uh, from about the Bees Road all the way you know, to the point. Um, and, and you can see about $50 million of that had been done BFF before FOFO uh, on that, uh, <laughs> in World Market and some of the other places. But it's a complex project. And you see these little squares. That was, I think, uh, 16 different design agents and 11 different contractors doing this. So what changes is that? You see how I screwed up that uh, surgery over there. So, you know, this is just about... Uh, uh, as complex, but just you know, bigger, bigger tools, if you know what I mean. But uh, one, one good thing that of the South contract, uh, one uh, was just let the other day, and that was I think we call that Sixth Street. That's SX Sixth Street South. Is that right, Walt? We call it SX SX One. There you go. SX Sixth Street South. That did a lot of intelligence in, in his, in his naming the things. But that's about $10 million. But the main part of that, all the hotels and, ho and homes on that point come through Maple Street, and that's a 42-inch main that's delivering it under the railroad tracks to Oak Street. From Oak Street, it goes down to Vision Street to, um, uh, to Seal Avenue and then to uh, Keegan's Bayou Processing Plant. And then, of course, logically, I said, we talked about the Hemp Hill Project uh, that should be wrapping up, and then the rest of it leaves us about $100 million in work to be done, of that $344 million. And again, we've been going round and round with, uh, uh, not round and round, but we've been working with FEMA and MEMA in, in catching up and staying ahead of the project, staying ahead of the, because the way this thing works is you pay the contractor, you get a cancel check, and then you apply for the reimbursement. And uh, so, it, it, you know, there is some mechanism to stay ahead of what we're through. We don't need all $344 million at one time. We just need two months of worth of business. And, you know, once a month, these, these contractors now, these three contractors are paid for this infrastructure project. But $344 million, and, and like I said, no telling how many linear feet uh, of roadway. Now, uh, I'll, you know, I'll open up for questions here. But the other thing we heard a lot about in the last, uh, especially in October, uh, was the uh, Pops Ferry Bridge and the extension from uh, Pops Ferry across Pass Road, across the railroad tracks to, to uh, Highway 90. That's, uh, that would be down here uh, to the west part of the Coliseum. Green line. The Green Line, okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, Pops Ferry Bridge, it was built in 79. Right now, I think last month in October, there was 61 openings. It's an old bridge, old parts, and you know you almost have to have knee replacements and so and those kinds of things. But it's bigger and, and more huge. Uh, you can't get the parts, okay? And we've done some things to digitally control this, and, and that had some hiccups there. But it averages about 45 times a month. That's not counting the maintenance that we do. Now, there's no solution. You can't rebuild that knee. You know, you got to you got to have a whole new deal, and that's about a 75 million dollar project. So if you look at this. Uh, you know, you got when you surf, you look and where the wave is coming from. Well, we're going to take it and not only replace that bridge, but add another new bridge. We call it the Bluxy Beach Connector. That maybe will tie, if I get $255 million, that will tie uh, Highway 67 going uh, through Will Market, Sarnas Boulevard, across I 10, another bridge without a, a draw. Dying in right at the, the Margaret Sherry Library or where the water tower is, in the new bridge, which is in a place. You know the design. That's, and I think that's actually. This is a more of an aerial kind of view on that, an info. So, 67 Wool Market New Bridge, the one phase two. This is phase one. We talked about taking the uh, pass road, crossing pass road to Highway 90 west of the Coliseum. Again, we, that's an 80-20. We've got our money. We've got our match to do this. One of the reasons we closed three of the uh, railroad crossings, am I talking loud enough, can you all hear me, was uh, uh, that new crossing of uh, 
uh, the railroad, because we had 21 crossings between uh, the, the Oak Street Bridge and, or between Oak Street and uh, that area. So that's in place. We're actually uh, acquiring property. Uh, the other part of the thing, phase two, now again, this was, we started this in 2015, right? With uh, uh, the design, and it, these things take years to uh, get permits, and we're in the process of it. This, this trigger, Christy, where are you? We, we talked, well, when do you think we're going to bid this thing out? Okay, uh, we're, we've actually delineated about 90, or no, excuse me, 69 uh, locations that we're going to need for this new bridge. And we, uh, I think, Benson, you're going to put some, some pictorials in uh, the, the B News that will kind of show you what we're talking about. But this is, and when you look at all phases of this, you know, a few years ago we had to pull the trigger early on uh, cruising, right? And every time a, a, you know, a boat, marine traffic has priority, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the cars will stack up. I think we had, Joe, I think we had 800 RVs and, and motorhomes that we counted. Yeah. So they weren't happy with trying to get out of Biloxi. But if you could look at, you know, the, old thing, the whole scheme, that is an evacuation route, a uh, defense access route that will take us all the way to, uh, you know, to Wiggins and, and points beyond. But, you know, this is shows, you know, the phases of what we want to do. And again, it takes years. I mean, this is you know, 15, 20 years by the time you drive on that road. But in talking with our, our, our governor-elect uh, years ago, we talked about what could be unique. You've seen some creative things in uh, Alabama and uh, Florida about tolls and, and uh, private roads and so forth. So nothing is ruled out. But a design build in, you know, reduces that amount of time. So you don't have to do all these things, wrap it up in, in a bow and get all the specifications. So that may be a possibility on this phase that takes us from I-10 to uh, Pops Ferry. So the design build is certainly... Uh, a possibility and uh, maybe a toll, you know, that will, you know, when you thought $75 million out of each one of the bridges. So uh, we're excited about, you know, the plans that we have in place there. Um, the other, a couple of other things, you know, we've got a few new uh, locations. I think the Mississippi Coastal Mardi Gras Museum is opening up on this street. We talked a little bit about last time about, uh, about Howard Avenue. Sanger, we're, we know we've been successful in, in, in getting uh, at least a few million uh, from uh, MDA. Uh, a couple of other things that we're, we've uh, uh, acquired was uh, about $3 million to do a boardwalk. Those ugly rocks that are the, uh, the state office building uh, around the, the T Pier, we call it the T Pier, Forest Avenue all the way to Kensington. We're going to actually put another boardwalk there. But we also we successful in getting some money uh, through uh, the state and, and, and MDA and all our partners to do uh, a boardwalk between uh, Oak Street and the small craft harbor with a, that 18-inch knee wall that we talked about that will lower, you know, the uh, or raise the profile so we don't want to see sand on that beach. But also, uh, I think we're about 50,000 cubic yards of heavy sand. 600 micron sand, right, Vincent? You like all those tags? You know what a micron is, right? Uh, but anyway, right now we're in the, in the, mile, in the middle of doing that. That's about one mile of uh, knee wall. Now, uh, coincidentally, uh, does everybody know what the longest continuous boardwalk in the country is? Atlantic City, 5.5 miles. Now, we could make them number three or number four. <laughs> okay, because you know, we got 26 miles of opportunity. Biloxi itself has, uh, you, and you see the 10-foot boardwalk that we're, we're talking about is uh, in bits and pieces. Well, Biloxi has 14,000 in place with 17,000 linear feet to go. So uh, we want to be able to take, you know, uh, and we've done a little bit of something at Point Cadet. You know, that boardwalk is, is, is uh, being completed, but take you all the way, you know, uh, to walk to the Bees Road on that beach on top of a, a boardwalk, not you know, a, a, a sidewalk that, you know, that could be caving in. So a lot of cool things. So those, those, uh, those are opportunities that we see, and we're digging every day you know, of uh, what's, you know, what makes sense for us. You know, Biloxi only wants their fair share, 
And uh, you know, we, we, you know, return on investment. We can promise everybody. You you show us a little bit of support, and we'll we'll throw it back to you in terms of a uh, uh, return on investment. The uh, you know, gaming is a, is a big part of our opportunity. I think with the experience of one really cool year of uh, sports betting, and definitely uh, the city council and has a lot of opportunity to uh, move forward with a possible new convention center. There's some things that uh, may be on, you know, on the uh, books that uh, will say what makes sense because we had about 7,000 hotel rooms, heads and beds, and uh, you know, let's get back to uh, what we were talking about as far as gaming, sports betting. I think was. Uh, Becoming a regular young man now, uh, sports betting was, uh, uh, you know, a, a pretty good hit, pretty good impact to us. But we see also the the linkage between sports betting because these are new folks coming to, and uh, you know, if you don't bet, you're going to be with somebody, you're going to be drinking a beer or, or eating a meal. There's definitely a linkage between sales tax and gaming, gross gaming revenue. So it's exciting, and people are knocking on the door saying, well, do you have a place to do this or do that? You know, in hotel rooms, you know, you've seen a few more that can be rolling out. Uh, the old Santa Maria property will be coming online in just a few months, I think. The, uh, and it just really is amazing on the activity. We talked a little bit of comparison of, uh, you know, doing business here or living here in, you know, in our area because when bang for the buck, you don't get a better bang for the buck than you do in Biloxi. So... You know, we talked about everything, right, Benson? Pops Ferry Road, Sanger. Uh, anyway, I'm done. You, you know, I'm ready for questions. <laughs> yep. So first, I just want to tell you that I'm, I'm extremely proud of the progress the Boise has made. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I'm a Walmart market resident. So I just, I, I need some clarification. There's a lot of confusion going on about this, this exemption. I don't think it's expensive, but are you replacing the current Pops Ferry Bridge with yeah, new? yeah, yeah. So you're not doing an additional bridge over the water that's going to back up. Well, you're going to do it you know, when you turn the key. You're going to be not running over the two-lane bridge, but a four-lane bridge, a high-rise bridge without a draw. Right. That's okay. the immediate plan. That's second phase of this this whole wool market uh, uh, Biloxi Beach connector. That you know that design is there. We're acquiring property for that bridge, and again, that's a seventy five million dollar bridge that will replace and tie in to the extension uh, across Pass Road to Highway 90. That's the next phase of, of, of that so of the project. So you're bridge across the marsh from Shorecrest down? Hopefully. That, that would be the, the... And then tie in the top ferry and tie, a new bridge. That's right. Two new bridges. The first one would be replacing the draw bridge. Okay, so there's, so there's, so there's two bridges. and one new bridge. Uh, two bridges, two new bridges. But we're, yeah, one's going to replace an old one. Okay. So we're going to remove the draw alongside the the, the uh, Pops Ferry Causeway, right? You know, the Causeway Park. There's a lot of confusion. I know I see you at Poppy all the time in Bull Market. Yeah. More communication about that, I think. Yeah. Well, again, you know, these things take so long. I mean, you, and if you don't start it, you know, you have no chance. And I think, you know, uh, years ago, uh, there was, I started with version A, and it wound up with like version J. And, 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 you know, with environmentals and all that sort of thing. So we're revisiting that in, in, in a number of ways. Uh, that does, you're talking about taking a long while. Wow. East-West corridor, that's how, that came up on the radar, you know, and, and what you can do. Now, we uh, didn't bring that copy, but uh, East-West, something to, you know, to take in, in, uh, in place of Highway 90. Well, you know, we're getting probably a $150 million amusement park going up uh, right there at the foot of the bridge, right? And uh, one thing that we have uh, support from Gulf Regional as well as uh, you know, some of the, other, uh, the builder grant kind of situation is to take an exit off of the Biloxi Ocean Springs Bridge to Howard Avenue. Now you think about it. You got one stoplight between the bridge and, 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 and Raynor Street, right? And then you can take Raynor Street to Porter Avenue, Porter Avenue to Irish Hill, Irish Hill to Veterans. Veterans, if you go to the north in, in part of the Gulf Regional Planning Commission approach, you can almost go alongside a 150-foot right-of-way possibly from Veterans all the way to DeBees Road. Now, in talking with Gulf Regional Planning Commission, they want to look, you know, it, to do the thing is, is millions and billions of dollars. But whatever you attack, where the first logical place is, if, it, if nothing else happens, that, head, that stands on its own. It has value. If you just take and put a four-lane boulevard or a boulevard between alongside the railroad tracks all the way to the Bees Road, takes you from 
you know, uh, across the, uh, where the Coliseum would go all the way to DeVee's Road, and that's doable. There's not, you know, a handful of properties you have to deal with. One of them being, you know, the, the uh, uh, old uh, Sun Course uh, golf course, and then uh, uh, between the Coliseum, which would be Beauvoir, all the way into DeVee's Road. So that has value. And if you did nothing else, that has a lot of value. Because, you, you know, that eliminates, uh, uh, you could actually drive from the bridge almost all the way to Gulfport without touching Highway 90. So that's one thing that's on the radar, too. But, uh, uh, but the good thing I'm excited about is, is that, you know, we've already talked to some of the landowners, and they understand that this is certainly a possibility. Um, and a lot of activity in, in a lot of areas. You know, RVs, RV parks and so forth, uh, there's some things that, that happen. And, and, and really, I think RV sales, when you look at the, at the highest level, RV sales is, is uh, at the top of its ball game now. So, you know, they got places to go. And, of course, we feel like Biloxi is the place to come when, when you're in an RV. Um, what else, Adele? If I get anything, then good? Not at all today. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so to make sure people understand, they're going to be seeing phase one of the construction, what? Rapidly, yeah. By next year, I think bid next year, right? Yes, sir. 2020. And I'm going to have to wait but, 20 years for a break. Well, how you feel? You feel like you'll be around for 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Are you really going to take that long? No, not the, the whole project will take 20 years. $255 million. But, you know, again, the exciting part of being able to deliver this is, uh, you know, this is a new bridge over some things that you can, you can address those environmental things. We've got enough right away from 67 all the way down here. So, I mean, that really uh, a light fires up everything on, on that beach to the west of the, of the Coliseum and uh, just makes a difference. You know, again, if you've got to go north in the storm, no, no draw right there. You know, even I 110, it's, it's subject to opening the thing. So, it gives us, if you look at this, go back to look at this picture. This is the, you know, coming in from uh, 67, that's 15, come back to 15, but this is sort of another ladder. Uh, what's on the, you know, this is 605, takes you to tradition and, and, and on into uh, 49. But this is a, you can come with it, stands out at you. We need to do this. And there's a, a that replacement bridge here, and this bridge taking you there. Taking you to there. Uh, so, uh, the other thing, if you look up here on today's agenda, uh, the Bella V uh, extension, there's a, a number with this thing that's council will vote on today. You can see there's no connection east west. This main, this is Wool Market Road. That's the only way, if you're going to go east or west, you got to go to Wool Market Road. This thing, this is outside, this is in the county, but that's you know, Kyle and Lorraine Road, so there's a ladder that we can put here connecting these two roads together. So that, they're on the agenda today to, uh, to build a, a first part of, of a uh, subdivision, but we'll get about 100 acres of right-of-way that put, puts us in a position to go get the, uh, the, the bill grant, you know, the, the state aid road money kind of deal. So, you know, it, it's exciting, but, it, you know, everything takes longer than you think, but uh, you got to, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. Across the T's and dot the I's or whatever. I don't know, whatever it was. But anyway, anything? Yeah? You mentioned, you mentioned the board vault. What's the status of uh, veterans best? Well, yeah, we're about ready to bid that. I think uh, we acquired the right away, Peter? Yeah. Christy? We have a bid in December on that website. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that's from veterans to the Treasure Bay. And coming up to, uh, to Highway 90 around uh, Camellia, right? Yeah. I think, uh, anyway, and, and the boardwalk, I think the county, I mean, the, uh, a, a boat launch there is, uh, the county's taking and run with that. We have some property right on the corner where the old Robert E. Lee and some of that, that uh, uh, riffraff and it used to be sort of a harbor there. Uh, and also, you know, we're again looking at the Coon Street, expansion of the Coon Street uh, boat ramp. So those are projects that are, that are on the radar. I mean, again, you try to see where the opportunities are and, uh, that's, uh, that's about what I, I can think of right now. I'm sure in a few minutes I'll, I'll say some things I should have said, but I'll think of some things I should have said. All right, any other things? Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Again, there's a coalition that uh, was formed in almost every uh, entity, the counties, the cities, uh, the state, 
And we're going to look at that, uh, but not only Bonnie Carey, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the Britain Sound uh, thing that what, what the Louisiana is pushing forward to. So it's a, another spillway that's going to go to the east and eventually get into Poncha, or get into our Mississippi Sound. We're fighting that. Louisiana has you know, committed to that, and I'm not sure where the politics are, but those are two things that are going to you know, hurt our salinity. You know, the, the conditions of that beach and enclosure like that. I never even dreamed that, you know, that, that those, uh, those orange flags would be out there for a long time. Thank you. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Thank you.